things aren't great. Hey guys, you don't need to spend a lot of money to get a lot of car. And in this new video series, we're gonna prove that because we bought four 1990s convertibles all for under $10,000. We're calling this from stud to dud. And I have brought the best one because we're not only comparing four inexpensive and badass convertibles, but we're comparing four different countries. We're comparing Japan to Germany to America to Britain. And I have brought the Japanese convertible. It's a 1994 Nissan 300ZX convertible. And this by far is the most rare because they only built 1,500 of them. I wonder what Andre brought. Andre, you have bought the dentist wife's car. No, I brought a piece of German perfection. This is a 1992 Mercedes-Benz SL500. When I was in high school, Roman, I had a picture of this car on my wall. You know, um, in the 90s when a dentist would buy a Porsche 911, yeah. which was very expensive, right? He'd have to justify it to his wife. So to get kind of an out of class free pass, right? Yeah. He'd yeah. have to buy his wife this. So you have bought the uh, dentist's wife's car. I, I disagree. I disagree, but but what did you buy? What did you bring? I bought this... I bought the ultimate in Japanese convertibles. It's a 300 ZX convertible, and it is badass, my friend. I wonder what Tommy brought. Tommy, you have managed to bring, dare I say it, the mullet of Mustangs. Ugly in the front, party in the back. Oh yes. I present to you the 1997 Mustang GT. Why do you look like you own a Fresno strip club? <laughs> no, because my car came from Palm Springs and also Los Angeles. You look like the owner of casino from the 1970s it has gone real bad and you had to sell all your assets because your wife left you and then the kids took the house for some reason what? and then you bought that why does your car have a bra it la bra excuse you it's a classy bra la bra and i've got these retro school headlight what? covers this is the best 1990s convertible you can buy hey i wonder what nathan brought Is it like... Oh, it's a Jaguar! Wow! Top of the morning, lads! <laughs> oh, I feel good. <laughs> and I know I look good. What do you think? Nathan, you have brought the Geritol of Jaguars. Oh, so wrong, especially from somebody who used to own an X. Um, so, here's the thing. This is, okay, it's a 2002, but it's basically the same exact thing as a 97, 98. Same car, it's just we couldn't find another one. And on top of that, this has unique touch-up appliances that are more tasteful than the ones that were in front of Tommy's car. I, I swear I've seen this car before. Yeah, you know, Tommy, uh, when we were going to work one day, there was um, a Jaguar that had somehow managed to drive itself up onto a rock. What? That is a bad day, huh? Someone someone had a... a Thank you. Thank you. You get to fix this, Toby? I'm thinking it's totaled, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I think you're but right. The cost member looks like it's bent, and then everything else is probably, <laughs> it's gonna be expensive. Yeah. Probably yeah. more than the value of the poor old Jag. Yeah. yeah. At least nobody was hurt. Yeah, huh. old, old timers, he, he's all right. He's a little shooken up, I could tell, but. That's good, as I long as no one's hurt, 
just a bad day. As fast as it happened, I think yeah. he realized what happened. He says, oh, I'm, I'm not going nowhere. Sun will do that. Oh yeah, it's a bright one. Ironically, a boulder in Boulder <laughs> got this car. It leapt out and jumped underneath the car. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen anything like it. All right, well, you know, in this series, we're going to find out not only what country built the best convertible in the 90s, Nathan, but... 90s, come on! Which of these is actually the best vehicle and which of us bought or brought the best car? So to do that, I think we need to do one thing, boys. What's that? Let's go towing trailers. No, no, let's go oh. drag racing. But before we do that, we have to assign points based on how much each of us spent on their cars. Four points is maximum, one point is the least. And let's start with who paid the least gets the most points. So Nathan, how much did you spend on this uh, Ford? I'm sorry, Jaguar. Now oh, come on, I got the Boulder discount, 6,500 bucks. That's a lot of car for 6,500. It is indeed. All right, Tommy, how much for the mullet Mustang? Well, it was 8,500. That's a lot, but how many miles? 77,000, pretty low mileage. That's pretty low, all right. Andre, how about you? What did you spend on this Mercedes-Benz SL? I have spent $9,000 and it's worth every penny. That's quite a bit of uh, money you put down on this. I feel like you're going to lose this one. All right, and of course, I bought this $8,500 Ultimate Z, Tommy. Did you know this was the most expensive Z back in the day? It was more expensive than the Twin Turbo. That was $39,000. This convertible was $41,000. Yeah, it was also the worst Z back in the day. <laughs> That's the reason they didn't sell many of them. All right, so we kind of tied. Yeah, so I think we both get, um, what, four points? No, no, no. Nathan gets four points. Yeah. I get three points. You get two points because you bought a car with a check engine light it's on. It's an EVAP code. It's nothing. It's still a check engine light. And of course, Andre, you only get one point because you spent the most. Nathan, I'm going to take my jacket off, okay? You used the other today, right? <laughs> a lot of Germans don't do that. I noticed from the very beginning of shooting this video that your top has remained up and it has not come down. Well, this is a drag race, so I want to be aerodynamic. Why isn't your top down? Uh, there's a small issue with the hydraulics, so I'm not sure if it'll work. I think it's time that you drop the top regardless. Okay, let me, let me do that. Andre, wait, what's that for? Oh, nothing. Just, you could um, go check out your Jaguar. You know, Tommy, if that top only comes halfway down, he's going to have Just a gi gi giant parachute. Just put it on. Fake drama's is, not working. This this is, Andre, this, put this, this, this off down. It's a Mercedes. It's a quality engineered item. It'll go down. Oh. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Hold on this. Hold on a second. That is German engineering at That's its best. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait. We got all day, Andre. Oh, yes. Did you see that? Okay, so now the procedure is I put the parking brake on. Yep. I slam on the brake. Sure. And then I use my hydraulic button. Pull her back, Andre. Oh, good start. Even better. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, gorgeous. Open sky. I gotta say, Andre, uh, you know, I'm impressed. And you even have a wind deflector. So we're gonna do a bracket style drag race here, and I propose we do Axis versus Axis and then Allies versus Allies. I would do Ford versus Ford. <laughs> it's not a Ford, it's a Jaguar, but we'll do Ford versus Jaguar, and then we'll do Mercedes versus Nissan, and then the winners will take each other on, and then the winner of the final bracket has this very special and unique car that we've brought to show you the difference between 30-year-old cars and modern cars. So there's a special guest appearance coming at the end of this video. But before we do anything, I'm going to race Nathan, and i got to remove a modification. So these headlight covers are the worst thing that's ever happened to this poor Mustang. So we're going to take these, just like this, 
pop them inside Andre's Mercedes like that. And then we'll do the same with the other one. Slow them down a little. So Nathan, why are you gonna win this race in the Jaguar? Aside from the fact I have 290 horsepower, 284 pound-feet of torque, I believe more than yours, and a 32 valve, all aluminum, four liter V8, I have some important names for you, Tommy. Sterling Moss, Jim Clark, Colin McRae, Lewis Hamilton, David Coulthard. These are people from the UK, and all of them adore this car. So your dad can stuff it. All right, I got a name for you too. Dale Earnhardt Jr., baby, woo! Maraca, Maraca. So I've got a 4.6 liter, naturally aspirated modular V8 with a whopping 215 horsepower. So I'm actually the lowest powered car of the group, but I got a manual transmission and a heavy right foot. So let's see what happens. By the way, I'm gonna win. And also I want you to call me Nigel from here on. All right, Nigel, I'm gonna send you back to the land of crumpets. <laughs> really close quarter mile 17.49 seconds at 85 miles per hour and I was six inches away from you oh dude that was close I was 17.22 at 85.1 um, and I got a kind of a rough start but great race Nathan that was a ton of fun are you are you leaking something it's British vehicle as such is required by law by by a royal decree to urinate upon enemy soil. This is the United States of America. As such, it needs to drop a little bit of fluid here and there in order to prove its dominance. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Great race, Nathan. Thanks, buddy. That was a ton of fun. Here's the deal about Mercedes. When Mercedes like this SL, comes out the industry pays attention and then they follow this car had one of the first automatically deployable rollover hoop bars for a convertible period five liters of V8 goodness 315 horsepower a ton of torque four-speed automatic and a power top hydraulic top remote key entry uh, uh, this is a technological tour de force. This Z, like I said, is the most hated of the Zs, but also the most unique. Only 1,500 were made. It doesn't have the twin turbo, so it puts out just over 200 horsepower, and it has a four-speed automatic transmission. So I have no doubt that if I had the twin turbo, it would be the fastest car here, but I don't, so I don't know what's gonna happen with Andre and myself. It'll be close, for sure. So Roman, um, do you have like 200 barely horsepower there? I do, Andre, but, but they're 200 angry horsepower. Angry JBM horsepower. Yeah, but they have like 315. Yeah, and you weigh like 315,000 pounds. So who's gonna win? I don't know, let's find out, let's do this. Okay. Yeah.
and the V8 just goes forward. Come on, Z! Oh no! Bye bye! <laughs> you know, it has a kind of leisurely start, and then the fury begins. The sheer speed of that run killed the camera. All right, congratulations, Andre. What was your time? 17.34 at 88.1 miles per hour. So I was 18.44 at 79 miles an hour. I got you on the start, but then the horsepower advantage. Gotcha. Yeah, and this Mercedes, um, it's kind of leisurely in its behavior taking off, but then when that V8 hits, it really hits. Do that Dennis wife, uh, <laughs> it was really one badass chick when she was up to speed. <laughs> Heck yeah! All right, so that means you gotta take on Tommy. Are you ready? Yes, I was born for this. Andre, this is very exciting because what we have here is the people's sports car, the Mustang. This thing was $28,000 brand new in 97 versus that SL500 or 500 SL, which was $97,000 back in 1992. So it's 28 grand, 97 grand, or about nine grand today. Yeah, but Tommy, you have a phone. I don't have a phone, but I do have a lot of fake wood trim. Tommy! See, hello? Hello, Tommy, can you hear me? Oh, bad start, Micah. You spun tires? Oh, uh, money shifted in a second. He's coming up on me. Oh, uh, he's got me in a third. Bye-bye. Uh, I just don't have the horsepower! Oh! He's gone! Thank you very much. Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, no! I let down all the Mustang, folks! 17.37! No! What was your time, Andre? So Tommy, I forgot to tell you, I had a secret weapon. I actually turned off my air conditioner and I got 16.7 quarter mile. Oh yeah, that's way quicker. I got 17.37 and I'm gonna get roasted in the comments. Oh, dang it. And then also I'm showing 88.3 miles per hour. I went back in time. Let's see what you got for me. Show starts in two minutes. Congratulations on your choice of the Jaguar XK series, the world's most exhilarating and refined sports car. We wish you many miles of enjoyable motoring. I interrupt this video for a quick one minute cool or crap review of each other's cars. And I'm gonna do Nathan's because back in 1999, as you recall, Ford purchased Jaguar, which at the time was still building cars. And I'm not making this up on a dirt floor factory yep this car was built on a dirt floor and it looks like it i mean i mean look at this this car has more wooden come on with me come on than woody harrelson i mean if you want the geritol jaguar if you want a car that says i've given up on life if you want a car that says i am bald sorry nathan and impotent sorry again nathan this is the one because it screams not just midlife crisis it screams i have completely given up on life because just look at it look at the wood look at the automatic look at the useless back seat and look at the sad sad growler jaguar in fact if you wanted a cool car of this vintage you would have been better off to buy the aston martin which was basically the same car but not with all that jaguar baggage i will cut to the chase i will rock the boat and everything else i will get in your face i will run for this race is mine what must i 
It's your race. What do you think of when you think Mustang? Right, an American icon. But what I see here, this 97 Mustang, is far from it. Yes, it may look interesting uh, over here from the side, but it has a truck of an engine. It's slow. It has, uh, well, a manual transmission from a garbage dump truck. And LeBron, and Tommy, why did you get these uh, headlamp covers? Awful, awful. Potentially the second worst Mustang ever. Andre, dude, I, I love you, but this cooler crap stuff, you're just not, you're too nice of a guy. You just don't have that, like, go in for the kill instinct. So, you know, you could. Well, my, my friend in college drove one of these. So I, I feel, this is my decade, so I feel attached to each one of these cars. And if I'm being honest, you know, I what? actually like Nathan's car. What? Quite simple. You now have in your possession one of the most exciting and technologically advanced cars that Mercedes-Benz has ever created. Wie geht's? Du bist wunderschön. That's probably what Andre should say, but he doesn't speak a word of German, which is ironic. But anyway, the point is, is that this vehicle it's the worst of all the convertible Mercedes-Benz out there. I actually saw Pat Sajak drive one of these. It was all blue. It was disgusting. It's not even a question of bad design. It's a question of questionable design. And on top of that, Andre managed to get a vehicle that has the wrong wheels. Look how narrow those things are. It's wrong, and it makes the car look even worse. And then on top of that, the 5-liter engine, it's just not enough horsepower to move something that weighs over 2 tons. And then on top of that, the interior is not as comfortable as the Jaguars, or even the Mustangs. It's kind of a sad car. Nathan, can I uh, hold your putter so you don't uh, damage Andre's? Yeah, it's a 5-iron. Now, by the way, speaking of damage, you're going to notice, camera guy, look at all the damage in the front of the vehicle. $9,000 and he had a vehicle that looked like someone took a shotgun to it in front? Help me, please. You know, on second thought, you hold your putter. Sports car of sports cars is now the convertible of convertibles. Introducing the 300ZX convertible. The 1990s 300ZX is one of the best Japanese sports cars of all time, but not this one, because this is the frumpiest and dumpiest of 300ZX they made. Just see, there's no turbos on this one, it's an automatic transmission. If this were a band, this would be the Limp Biscuit of cars. Not the Limp Biscuit, the Limp Biscuit. It's got a shopping handle on the back of it. What the heck were they thinking? It's got these horribly narrow little wheels. It's just such a cool car, ruined by the roof and the engine and the transmission. And now, on with the show. So I have brought the brand new Z, and it's just a Z for this generation, and it's got 400 horsepower and a manual. So, Tommy's used to driving a manual. This is the one. Oh, yes, it's gonna be fun. Woo! Now this is a Z, it's not that lip noodle thing over there, so I'm gonna hop in this and take on Andre in the SL. Okay, this is not gonna be easy, but, but I'll do my best. So Tommy, uh, my Mercedes is over, what, well, it's about 30 years old. That's right, yeah, but that was one expensive car back in the day. Even before inflation, it was 97K. After inflation, it's like 200. This Z is 52,000. I'm a little worried, though, because I've never driven the Z. And the first time driving it is going to be in a drag race against the Mercedes. Well, your car is more powerful. Uh, it's lighter. I mean, I can go on and on and on. Yeah, so I've got a twin turbo V6 with 400 horsepower. And even with my crappy ass behind the wheel, I think I'm gonna be able to take you. Let's see what happens. Yes! Oh, come on! A bend of the throttle, and then hard in the second. Sharp second, wow, the turbo! That's over 20 psi on the turbo gauge! What? 
104 miles an hour in the corner. Not bad for my first try, I think. So I, I did um, almost my best time at 16.9. What was your time? 14.9 at over 100 miles an hour. 104. This thing's a riot, so. You know, that SL was quick back in the day, but it's no 400 horsepower twin turbo Z. Well, there you have it, folks. guys know we're keeping score so in the drag race Andre you won so you get four points yes Tommy you were second so you get three points Nathan you're with two and wah wah I had one uh -huh. so when you add it up to the uh, value proposition who's got what Andre I'll start with me I have five points all together Tommy also five you're at four you're the winner six points <laughs> Nathan you dropped your putter <laughs> No, no, call me Nigel. <laughs> Nigel, you dropped your putter. And behalf of all the people in England, UK, I say thank you. And I told you I was going to win. This is a value proposition. You guys have no idea what you're going up against. This is the strongest empire ever. Well, in the next video, we're going to bring all four cars to the mechanic and see which one is actually in the best shape. We'll score that, and then we'll be sure to update the results. And I just want to say sorry to our friends here uh, at the Drone Club. I forgot, Tommy, we weren't supposed to do burnouts, so I feel really bad about that. I really forgot, guys. Won't happen again. Sorry. Yep, so CSU Drone Center, folks. We'll, uh, we'll buy you cookies. But as always, this has been Tommy and... Nigel. Send a bill to Nigel. <laughs> and Roman saying thanks for watching. Remember, check out alltfl.com and come back next week when we take him to our man Toby to see actually what we bought. Ciao.